Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in USL Championship. We will take you backward before we take you forward. Only a handful of matches left in the regular season, and we'll get you set up for the playoffs and everything that is going on in the league as the Eastern Conference is all set up for the postseason, and the Western Conference is chaos. So let's get into all of both and go back through the last seven days to get you geared up for another busy weekend in USL Championship. Going back seven days, San Antonio, a big win at home at Toyota Stadium against Colorado Springs, 1-0 as a minus 164 as San Antonio continues their push to be the top seed in the West and the top seed overall. Then midweek, Red Bulls 2 in Detroit, a goalless draw to plus 334 at Montclair. Loudon shuts out Hartford Athletic, first blemish on Tab Ramos' record as the head coach of Hartford Athletic. Loudon wins it 3-0 at a plus 190. Monterey Bay and Phoenix Rising. That is the Western Conference Game of the Week from early in the week. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship ESPN Plus and YouTube. Can Phoenix hang around the playoff picture just a little bit longer? Can Monterey Bay move into the playoff picture for the first time? We're underway at Cardinale Stadium. A little different here for Phoenix. What do you think of the moves to have not only Musa, who sort of transitioned into that role a couple of years ago, is this is through, and this is onside, and this is laid across Velasquez! The live standings for the first time with Sean Monterey Bay in playoff position. All night in this open, you put Sam Gledel underneath Valeski, let him run, let Valeski occupy the center backs, and it causes nightmares for opposition. Tries to round donor. That by Boone. And up the line. It goes down, penalty! Neither of these teams had won a penalty all season long. They're the only team in the league not to take a penalty. That the field, Sinti Moore pushes in. Jai does extremely well, and then it's always a difficult situation if your donor, the left arm on the shoulder of Jai, gives it. Aiden Quinn could potentially turn the tide of the rising season right here. Quinn! Never in doubt. As he said, see how the wrong way he likes to go down the middle. Never was in doubt, like you said, Mike. You want your leader. Well, ricochets off of Khalidal. And rolled down the left-hand side and into the penalty area. It ripped across and in! He's resurrected his career in Monterey. Grant Robinson's first of the year. 2-1, Monterey Bay. At a very high level, up, back, and through. It's Dawkins back to Murphy. And then... Jai trots in, crossing, trying to settle. Green, penalty, again! Can you believe this? Not a penalty all year for Phoenix. Two in the first half. Once again, it's just a rotation on the left-hand side, Santi Mara inside, Jai outside. And as this touch gets away from Rodriguez, I think it's the left arm that catches. In 25 minutes from the spot, Quinn to equalize again. He has Phoenix level. Opened up his hips, he closes them at the last second. Sends Siaha the wrong way, and Alexico to his near post. There's no stopping that to draw this game. Five games left for Miami. If he competes in all of them, he'd be eligible for the playoffs. Miami's already qualified. Ball ping back post. Seeking green, first headers away. Turning shot, fair, kept out, no finish! Velasquez! Strikers being in the right spot at the right time. The inability to clear this ball for Phoenix Rising bites them. But talk about fair, how difficult this is to get your body around. Reaction save. See what Murphy has in mind. 
Robinson standing up there. Lidl as well. He's going to whip that in front. Rebound! Out to the penalty spot. Pass Dawkins. Galito. That's blocked. Anguiano and Quinn are caught on the same plane. No one else dropping back. And then now it's time it's your striker. It's been lacking for Wangara. Just a different option to relieve this pressure that they've been under. Hurst. Hurst is broken through! Oh, what a goal! What a moment for Phoenix! And this is fantastic from Greg Hurst. He drops down to realize, I need to help my team break out of this, this pressure. Last year in Iceland, and hip injuries have really been his undoing this year. Ball ahead, Hurst, offside, offside. It won't count. For a brief moment, it looked like Phoenix was ahead. Bounces through, Gleadal, Gleadal. Trying to hold on, Kone, Kone goes down! Penalty! Penalty, Monterey Bay! Only given in the game! And once again, it's Gleedle at the thick of everything. As this ball comes across, Kone gets there before Musa. It is a PK, but once again, the inability to deal with this direct running from Gleedle has been the nightmare of Phoenix Rising. Clear and stay there. Kone gets there before Musa. Has any kick been more important to Monterey Bay Football Club than this kick right now? Kone! Oh, he missed it! He missed it! Kick. We've gone the three minutes. Headed to loot. First glance at the watch. What a 3-3 draw it was. Neither side got what they came for. Kone is devastated. The penalty gone awry. Monterey Bay continues to climb the standings even with the one point. Still a part of the playoff picture in the West as an expansion club at a plus 273. RGV continues their climb in the West as well, knocking off Charleston Battery by the score of 3-0 at a minus 143 at Patriots Point. Tampa Bay and Birmingham, another big matchup in the USL Championship in the East, a 1-1 draw at a plus 265. Then... It was Loose City in Memphis, Friday night football. Philip Goodrum's interview on SDH, we caught up with him for a 1v1. He told, told everybody about how big this game was, and he was not kidding. Here's your highlights. Memphis 901 visits Lynn Family Stadium, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. This game is airing locally in Memphis and Louisville on ESPN Deportes, nationally Sirius XM FC on the radio. It's local on radio on the Louisville. And it's also live on ESPN Plus. Here we go. You know, with Goodrum, it's kind of funny. It looked like Milan Olaski was far and away going to win the Golden Boot. He hasn't gotten one off a set piece this year, but Goodrum has flown into the conversation. Mushika Lusa denied. Good save, Muse. He away from danger to some extent. You can see bursting through the middle. Corbin Bone gets it wide to Mushika Lusa. He comes inside on his right foot. Let's rip. Goalkeeper knocks it down with pace. Doesn't just drop it softly, make sure it pushes with pace. It's very difficult for any. Gonzalez, Mushigalusa. Mushigalusa pumps that in toward the goalkeeper. Muse pushed it away. Del Piccolo, perfect tackle. Charles Dia to get up. It was a little bit of contact. This is a Mushigalusa effort, left foot. This is a positive from Kelly. Teed that up. Curling shot, bangs off the post. Kelly! No, it's not going to count. They can't believe it. Kelly was in an offside position. I'll tell you for certain now that you mentioned it, because he's in the middle of the goal. Mm -hmm. There was a player in an offside position to good his run. right. Good. Sometimes miss, and that's good sportsmanship from both players. Picked up by Gonzalez. Ball bounces off of Dodson. Harris! Wilson Harris! Right place, right time! finished it as he does so often there Wilson Harris for his 13th of the season counter attack long ball forward and when the ball goes wide it comes back and it's a lucky bounce that brings it towards that one there Jorge Gonzalez has the ball defender gets a foot in there 
from Dodson and it runs right into the path of Harris and he punishes it, puts it past Trey Muse. If Dodson was wearing a different color, that's the assist of the year. Off the back heel, right into Harris's path. Five miles from here at Lynn Stadium, U of L. Ball floated, soars upward. Turchi trying to get under it. Stabbed away Malloy. Danger still on for Memphis. Malloy crossing. Fernando brought it down. Sliding in. Still loose. Dodson! Dodson delivers! Memphis level! And they scored on the road in the second half again! He assist he had for the goal against. So who better for the ball to fall to than Dodson? to get the equalizer, get himself back on good standing with the Memphis fans ball in. It's all chaos at this point. Unlucky to some extent for Loose City, but they didn't clear it, and Dodson punished them. We have a sub, not ready. Well, Dodson atones in a magical way. Kelly turns, kiss Yedu. Leads it back, Malloy cutting back through, onside, lifting, header is in, it's in, it's Smith, it's a winner! Have a look here, it comes to Malloy, he hits it, and it's going absolutely nowhere. Now, is he offside or not? I can't see if he is, I thought the flag was gonna go up, they looked. Keeper comes, does he sell himself? And it's, as you say, Graham Smith who gets the ball. Question mark, Carl Morton, do you need to come for that? Can you not stay in the middle for the cross? And Because once the goalkeeper leaves there, it's a case of who can get up highest and it's... All right, back pocket, Goodrum sent off too! Goodrum is sent off! Or was a foot up, you see, maybe that's what there is. Now, is there anything from, from Goodrum? Oh, oh, there's the hand Goodrum in the face. Hand in the face. Well, there you go. He's now walking back into the field of play. Referee's pulling to the back pocket again. He sent off Buckmaster. And again, we finish with only 19 players. He just keeps his hand down, then he doesn't get sent off. But that's it. What an ending. What a game. Wow. It all came to life for the last couple of minutes. Graham Smith scores the winner in stoppage time. So Memphis comes out with the 2-1 win at a plus 351, and they close the distance from them to Lou City for the top spot in the East. We'll show you what the difference is coming up in just a little bit. Pittsburgh and Orange County, a 1-1 draw. The Miami FC and Monterey Bay, and a goalless draw. So Monterey Bay travels from one end of the world to the other. Got points. Detroit City and FC Tulsa, a 2-2 draw. Colorado Springs, Oakland Roots, a 1-1 draw. San Antonio solidifies their place as the top seed in the West, knocking off Sacramento Republic at Toyota 1-0 at a plus 125. San Diego Loyal locking in their place in second at a minus 105 on the road, knocking off Vegas Lights 2-1. And Indy 11 beat Loudoun United by the score of 1-0 at the mic at a minus 169. So your standings coming into this week. Let's start in the East. Loose City with the loss, 63 points, 31 games. Memphis, match in hand, they are at 61. They are unbeaten in their last four. Tampa Bay, 55 points, 16 wins. Goal difference of plus 28. They're at 55. Birmingham, 16 wins. One more match played. Goal difference of plus 19. Pittsburgh, they are in fifth, 31 matches played. They have 53 points. Detroit City, 51 points, 31 matches played. The Miami FC at 49 points with 31 matches played. That's your playoff picture in the East. We know one through seven. We just don't know the order yet, and there's a lot of jumbling that can happen. Three through seven separated by six points. Three through six separated by four. Teams not in the playoff picture in the East uh, finishing up their seasons. FC Tulsa, 36 points. Indy 11 at 35. Hartford Athletic with their first loss in five is at 33. Loudoun United is at 27, having lost four of five. Charleston, uh, 24 points, losers of two in a row. Atlanta United, two at 20 points uh, with a win, a loss, and a draw in their last three. And Red Bulls, two, having won three in 31, giving up 68 goals on the year. They are last with 15 points. In the West, San Antonio, 12 points clear. 
with three matches to go. They're your top seed in the Western Conference, once again, chasing after what's going on in the East, keeping an eye on Lou City. They should be able to lock it in with another result coming home. San Diego, 12 points back. They've won two in a row after slipping for a little bit about a month ago. They're at 58 points, 31 matches played. Colorado Springs still chasing the two, but they need San Diego not to get any more points in their last three matches. San Diego needs one point in their last three to solidify themselves as the two. Colorado Springs has two matches to play. They're at 52 points. Sacramento Republic, 30 matches gone, 49 points. El Paso at 43, so a six-point gap from four to five. New Mexico, 11 wins, one match in hand, 43 points. RGV has won four in a row, 12-6-12 and 12 now under Wilmer Cabrera. 30 matches played, so they've got some room. They're at 42 points. Now, chasing. Only one team has been eliminated from the playoff race, and that's Orange County SC. We'll get to them in a minute. Monterey Bay is at 40 points, 12 wins. Oakland Roots is at 40 points, 9 wins. Vegas Lights has lost four in a row. They're at 37 points. Then you've got Los Dos, who's lost three in a row. They're at 36, 30 matches played. Phoenix Rising, 33 points with 30 matches played. And Orange County with 32 points with 31 matches played. So that's your standings heading into the weekend. Looking at your juice boxes for some of the early matches on Tuesday. Vegas Lights hosting Monterey Bay. Vegas Lights a plus 143. Your draws a plus 238. Monterey Bay is a plus 160. Also on the board midweek, Atlanta United 2. A plus 216 at home as Indy 11 comes to town as a plus 100 even money. Your draw is a plus 266. USL Championship after dark at 10 o'clock. Sacramento Republic at hard health. Hosting Phoenix Rising. Even money plus 100. Phoenix Rising and the draw basically the same at a plus 241. Also uh, on the 30th, Vegas Lights hosting New Mexico on a quick turn. Vegas Lights a plus 127. Your draw is a plus 250. New Mexico United is a plus 152. So let's take a look at the rest of the schedule before we get you into power rankings and now all the other news that's been going on in uh, USL Championship as we go. Uh, the Vegas Lights New Mexico United match, Friday night football at Cashman Field at 10 o'clock is the end of the grid for the month of September. So you go to the month of October, and it's the traditional massive Saturday that's going on, so we'll go through it quick. 6.30 at Segra, Loudoun United, Detroit City. 7 o'clock, Trinity Health, Hartford Athletic, Charleston Battery. 7 o'clock at the Mike, Indy 11, FC Tulsa. 7 o'clock at Highmark, an interesting one with Pittsburgh hosting San Antonio. Does San Antonio rotate? 7 o'clock at Ricardo Silva, the Miami FC hosting Memphis 901, who cannot take a break because at 8.30, they'll have an idea as to where things stand. Lou City goes to Edinburgh, Texas to take on RGV. 10 o'clock at Cardinal, Monterey Bay hosting Tampa Bay Rowdies. 10 o'clock at Laney, Oakland Roots hosting Birmingham Legion. 10 o'clock in Irvine at Championship Soccer Stadium, San Diego Loyal in Orange County. 10.30 at Wild Horse Pass, Phoenix Rising hosting Red Bulls 2. Sunday, October the 2nd, gets us through the next seven days at Dignity Health Sports Park. It is Los Dos hosting Sacramento Republic. If you are in market and can catch a match, catch a match toward the end of the regular season, Quality soccer going on in the USL Championship. If you are in market and can't follow along in person, follow along on your local provider. If you're out of market and can't follow along or in, and can't be there in person if you're passing through, then go to ESPN+. Plus. All the matches on USL Championship are on ESPN+, Plus all season long. So power rankings for Week 29 as we get you in. We'll go through 1 through 10 and then focus on the Eastern Conference for the remainder San Antonio up 2-1. to one. Memphis 901 FC up 2-2. Two to two. That means Lou City drops to 3. Detroit City drops to 4. Sacramento Republic stays at 5. RGV now up to 6. Remember, this is power rankings. Tampa Bay down 1-7. to seven. Birmingham stays at 8. Switchbacks down 2-9. to nine. San Diego Loyal up 2-10. to ten. Also in the east, Pittsburgh down 2-10 to ten after uh, failing to close out Orange County at home and holding a lead for 86 minutes. Miami at 13, sorry, the Miami FC at 13, Indy 11 at 14. Also, uh, FC Tulsa up 1 to 18, Hartford Athletic down 2 to 19, Loudoun United up 1 to 21, Atlanta United down 1 to 21, and also on the board, uh, Red Bulls 2 up 2 to 25, Charleston Battery down 3 
to 27. Three players suspended for Charleston, looked well off the pace in the loss to RGV. Back-to-back -back losses by a combined score of 8-0 for Connor Casey. Uh, USL Championship Fans Choice Goal of the Week has been posted. You vote Monday through Thursday, noon to noon. Voting runs Thursday through Thursday the 29th at noon Eastern. Uh, Sam, uh, Sam Adeniran for uh, San Antonio. Uh, Elvis Amo for uh, Colorado Springs. Christian Pinzon for RGV. Leo Fernandez for Tampa Bay. Eric Bird from Tulsa. And that's your five that you can vote for. Go to uslchampionship.com. Click on Fans Choice for Goal of the Week before Thursday at noon and vote for uh, Adeniran, Amo, Pinzon, Fernandez or Eric Bird at uslchampionship.com. Also on the board, a couple of signings. Remember, Save of the Week goes from Tuesday through Friday as well at uslchampionship.com. Memphis 901 FC has signed forward Dylan Borzak to a multi-year contract, scored two goals in nine starts in his rookie year in a transfer from RGV for an undisclosed fee transaction pending league and federation approval. Two goals in 24 appearances and nine starts in his rookie campaign. Uh, looking to make an immediate impact for uh, Caleb Patterson Sewell and for Memphis 901 for the remaining days of the season. Uh, Hartford Athletic signed Mateo Ponce Ocampo and Dren De Bruna to USL Academy contracts. So good news for the Academy there from the NYCFC Academy. Hartford Athletic signs them from there. Uh, both 17 years old, they spent a combined six years in the NYCFC Academy. Technical director Ray Reed, very, very high on him. Mateo and Dren having the opportunity to train alongside our professionals and compete for minutes with the first team. Uh, examples of the talent that can develop rapidly through the professional environment we provide. Couldn't be happier to have them here. Uh, Ponce Acampo is a native of Harrison, New York. De Bruna is a native of Waterbury, Connecticut. The USL Academy contract allows them both to train and play for Hartford Athletic while retaining NCAA eligibility. Ponce Acampo as an attacking mid committed to play to Georgetown in February of 2022. And so those are the fourth and fifth USL Academy contract signings for Hartford Athletic into Bruna and Ponce Ocampo. Uh, also on the board, don't forget to follow along on USL Championship on their social media platforms, once again, Twitter, Facebook, and on Instagram at USL Championship, so you can be kept up to date with everything that's been going on there in the league all season long. Take a breath, folks. It's going to be a big sprint to the end of the line when it comes to everything going on in USL Championship. So uh, once again, if you're in market, go catch it. If you're in market and can't follow along, if you're out of market and can't, go to ESPN Plus and keep up with everything going on as we are in the sprint the final three weeks of the season here in USL Championship. For everybody here at SDH, I'm just John. Thanks for hanging out with us for another round of the SDH uh, coverage of USL Championship. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy your games.